Hey guys, it's Susie, and in this video, we're going to talk about making Canvas accessible. So really, a lot of these tips I'm sharing, even though I say Canvas for littles, they really could be for anybody who needs a little jump start, needs a little level playing field. So tonight's video is especially about that. We're going to talk about several ways that inside Canvas, built right in there, you can make Canvas more accessible for your little kids or for any kids. So stay tuned. There are tools that I have been sharing and training on forever just because I love them so much. And I've been in the Microsoft world for about the last six years. And then I um, have been in the Canvas world for probably three or four years now. And so when you see those tools come together in a way that improves learning outcomes for students, that's so exciting to me. So I had not been in Canvas in just a little while. And so when I came in again to work on some pages I was creating, lo and behold, here's a Microsoft tool built right in. Come to find out in October, November of 2019, Immersive Reader, who is now connected with a lot of tools, um, is, now, uh, is now connecting with Canvas. So it works on any page. So I'm showing you the page view in Canvas for that reason. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, hint, hint, go back and watch the modules, one if you haven't, uh, then you know that I always like to start pages from within a module, just like most of the content in Canvas. But I'm showing you the pages view because specifically pages are where you're going to find this immersive reader tool. I also want to give this caveat that in my free Canvas account, because I have a couple different Canvas instances, in free Canvas, I did not see immersive reader built in because it is an integration that Canvas had to kind of work with Microsoft to get. So just keep that in mind too. But here's what immersive reader does to make text so much more accessible to your students. First of all, this is self-controlled. They click it. Any kid can click it. Little kids can click it. You just train them that. And the most basic thing it does is it reads to your kids. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but let's see. Cute canvas. Next, let's work on making So it scrolls with them. I want you to notice how it spaces out the text. It makes it um, better for students who struggle with visual crowding. Now up in my top right hand corner, there are some other options that come with Immersive Reader. I'm not going to really go into a full Immersive Reader training in here but I want you to know this feature is here. And if you would like a separate immersive reader video, I'd be more than happy to oblige. Just leave me a comment below. But the most basic thing is that it spaces out the font. It gives them um, less distraction and it also will read to the students and they can change all kinds of things that, again, we're not gonna go into this video, but just be aware that in pages, immersive reader, check it out, it's life-changing. When it came out, I think in 2016, Forbes magazine called it the number one tool for dyslexic students but I see how it can help struggling readers, young learners, students who, who lack focus, just all kinds of things, and it's built right into Canvas. I wanna show you how to use audio and video to make your course more accessible, and I'm gonna show it to you from both the teacher perspective and then what the students can send back to you. So I'm on a, just a, a generic course that I have that I've been playing around with in these videos, and um, anywhere that you have a rich text editor, you can do the function I'm about to show you. So pages, which this is a symbol for a page, have a rich text editor. Quizzes have one. Um, discussions have one. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go into this homepage that is probably hideously ugly. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's, this is a Padlet wall. Let me go into a different one. Go back, go back. Okay, I'm just going to make a new page just for sake of not revealing pertinent or impertinent information. <laughs> impertinent. Okay, I'm going to just make a new page. And again, this will work on discussions, quizzes, anywhere that you get this box right here. This is called your rich text editor. Now, I have seen on some paid accounts that are more upgraded that your rich text editor has a little bit different view. But basically, if you see the buttons that you would see at the top of a Word document or a Google Docs document, then that's what I'm talking about, rich text editor. So I'm just going to call this page video and audio just for our practice purposes. And basically, if you want to record, you want to write something and then you want it to read to students, okay, you've got the immersive reader, but you also can add your voice to it. So I am adding my voice to this page, okay. You're going to hover and come right here to where it says record or upload media. And by default, it's going to want to record something. Hey, it's me. Um, and you can toggle on and off. So I'm going to scroll it down a little bit. You can toggle on and just show your mic or show your webcam, okay? So I'm gonna say microphone. It's gonna ask what I wanna do. Webcam, I can say no video, goodbye me. So if I just wanted to do audio directions or I could do video, I just start recording. I don't know if it's gonna record on top of a current recording, we'll see what it does. Hey, it's Mrs. Lolly, I want you to do your work on this page, thanks. 
Yours would be much better than that. You can play it. You can name it. I would highly recommend that you name it if it's something you're going to need to go back to. I'm just going to click Save. And then there's my voice. Now, it always looks ugly until you save. So I can just do Save or Save and Publish. This course is, again, just a pretend course. But now they will be able to play that, students will, and hear my voice. Okay, so you would, of course, read something better. You saw how I toggled the webcam on and off. If you wanted to have your video there explaining something or showing something, you could. But just imagine, instead of just telling kids, go here, do this, read that, you can actually do a live demo on the page or at least read them the directions. You're going to really empower another group of kids. So in the next little snippet, I'm going to show you how kids can do that same functionality. So let's talk about how students who struggle with typing for whatever reason can get an answer back to you in either video or audio form. I'm in a discussion. This will also work with an assignment. So depending on how long it takes me to explain it here, I can hop over there and show you that too. I don't want the video to be too long. But I'm going to go into, um, I'm just pretending I'm a student here. And I've gone in, I've pushed reply on my discussion. Let me go ahead and go back to that step, okay? I'm looking at a discussion. Again, I've gotten there from a module or however, however you have it loaded. It says, would you rather be a tree in fall or spring and why? So instead of a kid having to type out an answer here, they're going to look for that same button in the rich text editor, record or upload media. Again, they can use the microphone. They can use the camera. It's kind of weird staring at myself in that. They can turn their camera on or off. And if they've recorded the video or the audio somewhere else on a phone or something, they could pull it up, okay? I've seen this not just for accessibility. I've seen it for if you're a... Um, you know, a music teacher and you need your kids to be able to record a particular scale for you or they need to play, you know, a part of a song, something like that. So the, the possibilities are endless for how students can use this. But when we're in the context of littles, think of those kids that it would take them 25 minutes to type out their sentence. They can just tell it to you instead, whatever works. So they have the same recording and uploading features here that you do. If I were to go into an assignment, and I don't know if I have an assignment in this course. Let's see. I do. I have a pretend one. If I were to go into an assignment, and I'm going to actually go into that in student view. So remember on the home tab, look for the pair of glasses. That's student view, and you can try anything as a student. I'm going to go into that assignment. I can tell it's an assignment because it has a piece of paper with a pencil on it. And then I've already submitted in another video, but that's okay. I can resubmit. And I have right now, I have it just uh, configured to allow them to submit a URL. So I'm going to fix that. And this is actually, I think, important for you to see. Because you need to keep in mind what it is you want them to send to you before you go saving your assignment, sending it out into the ether. So right now you see where I have submission type online. I, I wanted it to be a URL for another video, but this time I'm going to say you can actually upload something. You can do a media recording. I'll just give them all the options. I'm going to click save. I'm going to go back into student view. So I was in teacher view for a minute there. You're just walking along with me. And now when I click that as a student, and I, again, want to resubmit because I had already submitted it before, then here's the option for media. So that's a little different. I want you to see that so that when you're guiding your students, you know where to tell them to click. All of the stuff that we're doing, you're going to need to practice with them a few times, but then guess what? They're going to be able to do it. Maybe if you're transitioning to remote learning in the fall, you spend your first couple online meetings just practicing things. Like I said, I think in another video, Harry Wong. All those routines that you would have practiced in person, walking down the hall, raising your hand, sharpening your pencil, then some of it's going to be transitioned to how do we use Canvas, but y'all, they will amaze you with what they can do if you let them practice it. So again, there's that record button. It looks the same when you click it. It just didn't look the same to find it. Hello, it's me again. So that's how we can use audio and video, both from a teacher perspective and a student perspective, to enhance accessibility in Canvas. My most popular video in this series has been making Canvas cute, so I think it's worth revisiting emojis, but from the perspective of using them as an accessibility tool. This little balloon here might seem kind of silly, and you're like, why do you need that? But when you have a kid who struggles to focus, struggles to read, or is a young learner who has not learned to read yet, that, uh, that little emoji or that particular color of the emoji can really direct them to where they need to go. So I just want to do a quick reminder of some ideas for using emojis and how they make your course more accessible. So first of all, you can use a picture and tell your kids, hey guys, this week we're going to do everything that has a red balloon. How did I get that red balloon there? You can put it anywhere you have text. So I'm going to go into like I'm going to edit the title of this module and delete my red balloon. 
I'm using a Windows 10 device, and so I can do the Windows button and the period on my keyboard to bring up the emoji keyboard. If you're on a Chromebook or another device, you can just use your touch keyboard and iPad. Um, just bring up emojis however they work for you. But again, Windows and the period brings them up for me on a Windows 10 machine. And then I just type to search on this particular one. So I'm going to type um, Christmas. That has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> but we're just going to type it. And I can tell my kids, hey, look for the Christmas tree. That's one way to use emojis. It could go with the theme of what you're working on in that unit, or it could be a visual cue. Hey, go look for the Christmas tree. Or you can use them to group as well. So let's just say kids were working through a module, but I only wanted them to focus on a couple of the items for now. I can go in and I can color code those with emojis. So again, I can go into the three dots, edit. That version is just going to let me edit the title, okay, which is what I want to do. And on that one, maybe I want to put a something red, okay? And I'm just going to make it a red circle to keep it simple. After I've found that one time, I can actually copy and just use it again. So I'm just going to do update. And maybe I only want them to do the things with red circles today. And they will know that because everything that has a red circle on the title, and these titles do carry over when they actually click. So everything that has a red circle, they're going to know that they're supposed to do, and then they're skipping this one. So again, think of it not just as a picture, but as a way to color code and group. So I hope these ideas have helped you make your course more accessible. I would love to hear in the comments. It really helps me to know what other ideas you have. If you're liking these, you know, what other videos you want to see. So leave me a comment. Let me know if this has been great, if it's been horrible. <laughs> Let me know how it's helped you. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time, so if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that, and all of my themes of my blog. So, did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.